Welcome to a kids books read aloud channel story time with little book nook. Today we are reading The Name Jar by Yang Suk Choi. If you enjoy this story time, please hit the like button and watch all the way through. Through the school bus window, Anhe looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away on her tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? on her had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Anhe, surprising her. Anhe looked up as more kids leaned over. No, uh, it, it's mine, Anhe answered quickly, putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Anhe, said Anhe. One? The girl asked, crunching up her face. Oh, oh, One, some kids chanted. No, no, Anhe corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Anhe. Oh, it's Yuhe, the boy said. Like, Yuhe. What about hey you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. On her hurry to get off. You hey, bye bye! The kids yelled as she laughed. On her felt herself blush. On her stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Anhe nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl! he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kakaros, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kakaros thanked him and greeted Anhe. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Anhe smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Anhe pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class. But I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kakaro showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a banking career and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Anhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Anhe? her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Anhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you're learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Anhe, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Anhe is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Anhe complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Anhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Anhe just wrinkled her nose. 
Later that day, Anhe and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's falafel, Tony's pizza, and Dot's deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar, until they got to Kim's market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed on her favorite for soup. It made Anhe smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother said, does not mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Anhe. Helping your mother with the shopping? He asked. Anhe nodded. I am Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Anhe, she answered. Oh, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Anhe nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Anhe. That evening, Anhe stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me. She worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Shuji, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Anhe arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Anhe took one out and read it aloud. Daisy! That's my babysitter's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy who sat next to her. Anhe took out the rest of the papers. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Anhe nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help, a smile spread over Anhe's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like. Or pick them all. And you'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Anhe looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey! A familiar voice called out to her. Anhe turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Anhe thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow! That's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Anhe said. And the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and Anhe read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, 
Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at the snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Anhe got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Anhe, I hope you're enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here, the moon is up, but there, the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you will always be my Anhe, your grandma forever. Anhe took out her wooden stamp and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Anhe walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Anhe. Hello, Mr. Kim, Anhe replied. She felt as if she were back in her old neighborhood and career. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Anhe? He asked her with his eyes open wide. Anhe looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Anhe. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Anhe, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Anhe smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Anhe, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Anhe came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Anhe slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Anhe said. It wasn't at Mr. Kakaro's desk or any other desk and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves as the other kids arrived they helped look soon mr kakaros came in and ralph shouted at him the name jar is gone the jar with all the names in it gone mr kakaros replied with a look of concern he asked anhe did you get a chance to read all the names anhe nodded she took a breath I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Anhe wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Anhe means grace 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 in hay shouted ralph everyone tried to say it yin hai um he on hay on hay said her name again slowly and clearly soon the kids began to say it better even mr kakaras they applauded on his choice i was named after a flower Rosie whispered to Anhe. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kakaras reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Anhe heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Anhe. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Anhe. Anhe said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Anhe, Anhe, come downstairs, Mother called up to Anhe. Your friend is here. 
and he rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Anhe breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I, I took it. But only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Anhe said happily. Then she pulled out a piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name drawer to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Aunt Hay. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinko, read Anhei. That means friend! And Chinko smiled back. <laughs>